Uh, he calls me names. So ability to um, to let go of whatsoever thing that happened yesterday and see a new hope. This songwriter says that because he is good and his mercy shall endure. In other words, his mercy is being enduring is as a result of him being good. Amen. His mercy is enduring is as a result of him being good. If you want to know someone who is bad, it's by the way they choose not to show mercy to people. Because he is good, and then his mercies shall endure. Very simple song. Come, please take it again with understanding. Four. We're going to read from 
from verses number 7 to 11. And for those of you who are not worship with us for the first time, you know how we do that. We'll read responsively. I'll take the first one, the next verse, you take that, and the last verse, we all chorus that together. Amen. 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 Come on now. Amen. 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 Somebody excited to be in God's presence. Amen. 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 So first John, first John chapter number 4 from verse number 7. Is it possible we read, um, what do you have, the AKJ? Okay, let's go with AKJ. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Next verse, church. Verse 9 then says, In this the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Next verse. Verse 11, everybody all together. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And so, Father, we just want to thank you again this morning. The entrance of your word gives light, it gives understanding unto the simple. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this new series starting today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because we know that in the place of darkness this morning we will receive light. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because we know that in the place of confusion and obscurity we will receive direction and clarity. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because we know that no one under the sound of my voice this morning will exit this room the same way the came. We give you praise, our Father, and the Church of the Lord says, Amen. Amen. You know how we do it? If you're not watching with us for the first time, you move around, give someone a high five and celebrate you welcome to church. So great to see you. I do want to thank you for the opportunity to be able to come and share with Good morning, I celebrate you. Congratulations. Thank you. God bless you, my God. Hi, Joshua. celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. I welcome you all to church in the name of Jesus. It's the very first Sunday in the month of February 2020. Hallelujah. Now that also means that the year 2020 is gradually, you know, rolling off and rolling away. How many of us have um, our promise picked already? Do you have a promise? Please pick it. Get props. Get, 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 get. If you do not have, go pick it right now. Can we have the basket pass of ushers? Please, whenever you come into church, make sure that you pick your props. Make sure that you pick your props. And one of the things that we're going to be doing going forward would be to actually declare this is not just a sheet of paper or a little piece of paper. I beseech you by the mercies of the Lord. This is God's word to you, or one of God's words to you as we journey through this new week. Amen. So I would like us to, you know, confess or declare our promises. Okay. Amen. Amen. I would like us to declare and confess our promises. Can we all do that? Does everybody have yet? Brother, did you have yours? Okay, so why not let's read out loud. Everybody read whatsoever thing you have. I have here, now may God give me of the dew of heaven to water my land and of the fatness, fertility of the earth and an abundance of grain and new wine in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do you love the word that you preach? Do you love your promise? Make sure that as you journey through the week, you keep continuing, you know, meditating on it and see God show up for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So this morning, like you all know, every start of the month, we begin a new series in church. 
And the reason why we take our sermons by series is simply such that we'll be able to, you know, pick a topic that we feel it's a point of concern, you know, and deal with it and hear God's mind to us, you know, in respect to the same topic. And knowing that February is the month of love. And actually, since the start of this ministry, especially last year, in the month of February, we've always chosen that same month, you know, to remind ourselves of how much God loves us. The need for us to love ourselves and the need for us to love others. So this morning, we're starting a new series titled Loving and the Living, or Living and the Loving, as you want to call it. Can somebody say living? Living. And the loving. Living. Living and the loving. So this series is going to help us to cultivate a lifestyle of love. It's going to help us to cultivate a lifestyle of love. Specifically speaking, uh, because this is a season of love, the word love you know, has also been so bastardized and so loosely used. Many claim to love one another without understanding exactly what love is, or in essence who love is. February 14th is a day dedicated for love by lovers across the globe. Valentine's Day as they call it. But beyond that, there is a Valentine's Day that they cannot be capped in a day. Because for us who are believers, this love life is a life that will be called into. And it is important that as the devil you know, moves about and spreads lies, deceit in the heart of people as to what love fully entails, it is important that for those of us who are believers, we are also quick you know, to remind ourselves of what exactly love is. And in the passage of the Bible that we just read first, John chapter number 4, specifically verse 8 says to us, he says, because God is love, for God is love. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Last year, I treated something very similar to this. And one of the major lessons that I'd like to you know, re-emphasize on again, that I was taking out of that particular session, is the fact that love is first a noun before a verb. The word teaches us that love is an action word, and I totally agree with that. The love is an action word. But for those of us who are believers, we must recognize that first love is first a noun before it is a verb. In other words, love is first a person before an action. Somebody in God's presence. Love is first a person before an action. Until you realize you fully understand the fact that love is a person and that person is God. You have no capacity to love as God desires it. Except you realize and you know that God himself is love. And you embrace his love. You see him as he is. And you understand why he is love. You have no capacity to be able to love another person. Many of the things the word called love or termed love today is actually not love. Many of them is lust, deceit, lies, all sort of cunning ways, you know, to, to, uh, uh, to mesmerize the other person and take advantage of them. We see young guys, young girls claiming to be in love, a guy, you know, telling a babe that he's in love with a babe simply because of the babe's, you know, physique or appearance or, 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 or exposure. You see a babe also telling a guy, promising a guy of his own dying love for the guy, simply because of the guy's, you know, six packs, broad chested, dark skinned, you know, and the kind of car that he drives and the kind of house that he lives. These are not measures of love. As a church, it is important that we tell ourselves the truth. So this series is going to shape our understanding of the Father's love. Why we must accept it and why it is also important for us to be able to express this love. Because that was the reason why we have been saved. To express the love of God that has been poured out upon us by the Holy Spirit. Can I have Romans chapter number 5 from verse number 1? Romans chapter number 5. Romans chapter number 5, from verse number 1. Romans 5, verse number 1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Verse 3 says, 
And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. The verse number five says, Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. The love of God has been poured out upon our hearts by the Holy Spirit which was given to us. Verse 6 says, For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Amen. Verse 7 says, For scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. See how God demonstrated his love for us in verse number 8. Verse 8 then says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 9 says, Much more than, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him, just because of his love. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of the Son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Amen. Verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us. But God demonstrates his own love toward us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. No man is an author of love. Love originated, love came from God himself. God is the author of love. He's not just the author of love, he's love himself. You can love, give something to someone without loving the person, but you cannot claim to love someone without giving. Bible tells us in John chapter number 3, verse number 16, he says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So the proof of the Father's love towards us who are believers was actually the gift of his son to us. Until the world, both believers and non-believers, understand this truth that the Father loved the world so much and lost us so much in our sinful state was the reason why he gave his only son. The world will always have a misconception of the term love. No matter how much the world tries, all the vicissitudes in life, all the troubles, all the chaos, all the mess in this world that we, have, that we live in right now, everything boils down to just one thing, the lack of love. This morning, Sister Tolu, while she was, you know, encouraging us as, as volunteers in God's house, she was trying to let us understand again how working in God's house does not necessarily, you know, make us have a right standing with God, with God because right standing with God, which is righteousness with God, is not a function of works, of the things that we do, but a function of grace and of the mercies of the Lord upon our lives. So how did righteousness come? Because it was impossible for man to be able to fulfill all the laws. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt not do that. All those things, it was impossible to leave them all together, to fulfill everything. I shared the repeatedly in this church, the terrible thing about those laws was the fact that of the ten of them and much more that was given unto Moses, if you break one, you've broken all. So Jesus came to fulfill the law. He gave us love instead of law. Because love fulfills every law. If you have love in your heart, you don't have to be told not to murder. You don't want to murder. Don't commit a dot. If you have love in your heart, you will not want to go and be sleeping with somebody else's spouse. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long on the face of the earth. If you have love in your heart, you don't have to be taught to honor them or to respect them. So in laying foundation for this series, it is important that we all be on the same page as to what love exactly is. And I just want to quickly cast our memories to the way it was in the beginning. 
Bible tells us that uh, 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 in creation, in the book of Genesis, how things were formed from the beginning. In Genesis chapter number 1, chapter number 2, 3, and 4, we read about the creations of the world and how beautiful things were. In Genesis chapter number 3, verse 8 in particular, tells us how God usually walks into the garden of, the e of Eden in the cool of the day, just to fellowship, you know, with Adam and Eve. Bible tells us that the sin came into play and that began the hula baloo in the world that we see today. All the mess. The only panacea for all the troubles, all the turmoil, all the issues of life, everything, anything that you can think of, of in love, in, I mean, on this, on this earth. No other response but love. And for those of us who are believers, if indeed, like the Bible says in Romans chapter number 5, that the love of Christ has been poured out upon us in our heart by the power of the Holy Spirit, it is then our responsibility to teach the world, to teach people, our friends, our associates, our colleagues, everybody around us, how to indeed love. But before we can teach them how to love, we must first of all accept this love ourselves. And sadly, let me tell us the truth, many of you have not accepted the Father's love. You're saved. You come to church. You've not fully accepted the Father's love. You have not fully accepted it. You still think that when you mess up, that this love is going to go. The devil still makes you to think that he loves you based on what you have and what you do not have. Do you know the beautiful thing about the Father's love towards us? It is not based on what we have or what we do not have. In actual fact, it's not even based on who we are. It's entirely about him, about who he is, because he is love. While we were still in our sins, while we were still in our terrible state, this man loved us and died for us. He gave himself up for us. Until believers grasp this love, we accept this love, and we take it as from the Father, the way the Father has loved us, we will not be able to share the same thing to the world. No man can give what he does not have or what he does not have. If you fail to accept in the Father's love, you will not be able to give the same thing out. So this love that the Father has for you, it's not based on your physical appearance. When a guy and a girl, when they're in a relationship, for instance, even in marriage, I mean, if you want to get married, for instance, one of the things your counselor will want to, you know, ascertain will be what's the physical attraction between you and your, and, your, and, your, and your husband or your wife to be. There must be a physical attraction. There must be a physical attraction. I remember... I remember my wife and I being asked the same question. And she said, what did you say you love about me? <laughs> <laughs> so I told the um, Reverend Father, I mean the, Reverend, the, the priest, about my own physical attraction towards her. Physical attraction is good. But you know what? True love, real love, as the Father defines it, and as the Father desires it, goes beyond your love goes beyond your physique, goes beyond what you have and what you do not have, goes beyond all of all those stuff. So when the mess in the world was created in Genesis, God drove Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. In the next chapter, you will see the first murder recorded. Bible says that at some point, God took a look at the world and he said he regretted creating man. Then he picked Noah. Bible says that Noah found grace in the sight of God. Noah and Noah's wife, Noah's sons and Noah's sons' wives. And he asked them to create, he asked Noah to build the ark. And the ark was what preserved Noah and the family with some animals. Genesis chapter number 6, Genesis chapter number 7. But even after that was done, God still felt that this is still not the way that I desire things to be. This is still not the way that I desire things to be. To tell you how serious it was, Bible tells us about the Tower of Babel. How people, you know, gather together and say, let's, let's create a mountain, an edifice that will be so high, so we'll go on top of it, so that we can meet, we can go meet with God, so that we can be like God. But all of all these things still couldn't save souls. Every 
three of this, none of them could still save souls. So God looked around and says, because in those days when you commit sin of any form, you go meet your first, in this case your pastor. Then you go with your haifa, your ram, your bulls, your goats, or whatsoever animal that you have. Then you go with it and you present it to him. Then they will slaughter that and use the blood and the fat in it as an atonement for your sins. The children of the priest, God forbid in this case, maybe Lashia and Adasa, that Samos, I mean, uh, Eli's children and other priest's children, they got so, so greedy and they messed up, you know, the purification process such that when you come, when you bring your, bring your own ram, after they are slaughtered, okay. they take it, go and do barbecue meat. <laughs> With, and they dine with wine yeah. with their friends. God still looked. This was not the plan. This wasn't the intention. This wasn't the way that I desire things to be. And the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah about the promise of a child that was going to come. Who would be the savior of the world? The love that the father has was the reason why he gave up his only begotten son. The love that the son has for you, Sister Juan, was the salvation of your soul. To the person still wallowing in sin on the city, you know, on the street of Regina, downtown Regina, no matter how terrible, how debilitating, how, how horrible that person's life is, only if the person can step forward and accept this salvation, it's still available for the person. That's love. That's love. That's love. The Father's love. So Jesus was sent. So God sent his, his Son on earth as a testament of his love for mankind. Essentially to save us from destruction. To reconcile us back to him. That's the reason why we can say that anyone who has received the love of the Father has the life of the Father in him. Anybody who has received the love of the Father has the life of the Father in him. Bible says that he who does not love does not know God because God is love. How well do we love? If God does not love us based on our physical appearance or based on the things that we've done or the things that we do not do, how then do we make our own, judge our own love towards others based on what they've done for us? You know, on earth, it is way very, very easy to love those who love you. Oh, Sister Mary has been so kind to me. Oh, Sister Mary, she's been so giving to church. She says so well. She loves the Lord, and then she loves me. She loves my family. So because of that, I'm going to love her. It's so easy to do all of those. What about those, you know, who tempt us? What about those who, who hurt us? What about those? who do not believe in us? What about those who use all sorts of derogatory and very demeaning words, languages on us? I'm not saying that it should you know, be in an environment where someone keeps talking down on your person, reading curses and abuses on you, and trying to mess up with your mental state. No, don't, you, can, you, can, you can be friends with someone from afar. You can be friends with them from the balcony. But I'm saying that in your heart, in your heart, can you see an individual and see the person just the way Jesus sees them? If somebody walks into this room right now and looks wretched or tattered or unkempt with um, smelly, rough ear and all of all those things, if that person attempts to sit in between Sister Abigail and Brother Ade right now, it's more, it's more likely that they will want to just naturally shift a little bit for the person. But you see, the disciples was, they were asking Jesus, you said we cared for you. You said we loved you. You said we were this, we were that. When did you do all of all these things? And Jesus said to them, say the moment you do it for any of all these ones, you've done it for me. Love. This is the greatest force on the face of the earth. See, you cannot also love yourself. One of the ways that you know you don't love yourself is if you failed to forgive yourselves of some hurtful things that you've done or that has happened to you in the past. 
One of the ways that you would know that you've not accepted the Father's love is if you're still haunting yourself, still killing yourself on some messes, on some mistakes that you made in the past. That means you've not accepted the Father's love. So to forgive yourself, you must first accept the love of the Father. Take that love in. When that love comes into you, shed abroad in your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit, then you are capacitated to first love yourself for loving another. Should I shock you this morning? Anybody that you see who is hateful, prideful, and detest hate people, get angry so easily, it's a proof that they lack self-love. There are bitter people everywhere. Bitter people everywhere. Get angry at slightest provocation. Bitter people, you cannot give what you don't have. So if I don't love myself, I cannot love you. You get what I'm saying this morning? If I've not accepted the Father's love, if I don't see myself the way the Father sees me, I cannot love you. That's the reason why they see wrongs in everything that you do. Instead of commending you, instead of complimenting you, instead of speaking good about you and speaking good to you, encouraging you, they talk you down. They cannot give what they don't have. It's because they don't have it themselves. People don't appreciate what they don't have most of the time. Watch it. Many of those who are very critical about your life, the things they are critical about about your life are things missing in their own lives. Somebody, this church is too quiet this morning. Is somebody God's presence. Yes, somebody God's presence. Yes, so many of the things, many of the, those who criticize you the most, many of the things they criticize you on, stop, just take a moment and study their life. It's something missing in their lives. <clears throat> so they be, believe, they think, that by pulling you down and by speaking down on you, it helps their own ego. It helps their own confidence. When you see someone who is rude, you know, some people are very rude by default. They don't care whose ox is gone. If you see someone who is rude, it's a proof that that person also has not accepted self-love. And self-love is not possible if you don't know who love is. The love of God has been shed our blood in our heart. Another version says poured in our heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter number 5, verses number 12 to 21, if you may please give me that in the message translation. Romans chapter number 5, 12 to 21. I want, I want to show you, I want to show you how powerful you know, the love of the Father is. Romans chapter number 5, 12 to 21. See, you know the story of how Adam landed us in the dilemma we are in. First sin, then death. And no one exempt from either sin or death. That sin distorts relations with God in everything and everyone. But the extent of the disturbance was not clear until God spelled it out in details to Moses. So there, this huge abyss, separating us from God, dominated the landscape from Adam to Moses. Even those who didn't sin precisely as Adam did by disobeying the specific command of God, still had to experience this termination of life, this separation from God. Give me a second there. Hold on a second there. Let me let you know this morning, Kingdom Influences, disobedience to God's instructions to God's guidance, to God's laws, is a proof of lack of love. One way to prove that you love God is to obey Him and to honor Him in all that you do. The Bible says that, but Adam, who got us into this, also points ahead to the one who will get us out of it. Yet, the rescuing gift is not exactly parallel to the death that is dealing sin. If one man's sin puts crowds of people at the dead end, a beast, of separation from God. Just think what God's gifts pour through one man, Jesus Christ, will do. There is no, there is no comparison between that death, that death dealing sin, and this generous life giving gift. Did you see that? And this generous life giving gift, the, the verdict on that one sin was the death sentence. The verdict on the many sins that followed 
was this wonderful life sentence. If death got the upper hand through woman's wrongdoing, can you imagine the breathtaking recovery life makes? Sovereign life in those who grasp with both ends. This wildly extravagant life gift that's the love of the Father. Amen. That's the love of God. That's the love of God. It says, in those who grasp with both ends, this wildly extravagant life gift. It says, this grand setting everything right. Come on now. This grand setting everything right that the one man Jesus Christ provides. The love that he provides. The love that he provides. Here it is in a nutshell. Just as one person did it wrong and got us all in this trouble with sin and death, that was Adam. He messed up. That was the reason why the world turned upside down. Just as one person did it wrong and got, it, got us all, got us in all this trouble with sin and death, just getting all that out of trouble, he got us into life. Yeah. Did you see that? Love is life. That's why this series is titled Living and Loving. Living and Loving. The essence of your life is to give love. I told us repeatedly, love is the greatest tool of evangelism that there is on the face of the earth. People don't care how much you know, John, until they know how much you care. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So you want to tell somebody that Jesus loves them, you first of all have to touch their heart. Prove this love to them. And of course, it's like I've been saying, you who wants to prove the love of the Father to someone, you must have received this same extravagant, life-giving love yourself. Bible says, one man said no to God and put many people in the wrong. One man said yes to God and put many in the right. Isn't that incredible? All that person lost against sin did was produce more lawbreakers. Because man was struggling. Thou shall not kill. I don't want to kill, Lord. I don't want to kill. I don't want to kill. I don't want to kill. Yes, you're not killing. But you're committing adultery. So you're condemned. Father and your mother. Yes, you are honoring your father and your mother, but you are a murderer. So you are condemned. That's what this is saying. All that person lost against sin did was produce more and more breakers. Because the more they try to keep one of those laws, they think it will make them right with God. But it doesn't happen like that, just like you shared. It doesn't happen like that. That was totally impossible. Romans chapter number 4 says to us, he says that if it were possible for man to fulfill the laws, Jesus wouldn't have had to die. Should I shock you? Listen to me very carefully and please listen to me. If you will choose to be conscious and live in love and walk in love, you can shut your eyes off all the other laws. Now, I don't think you got that. If you will choose to make love the fulcrum of your life, if you will choose to you to begin to live your life based on love, you can choose not to bother so much as to if you are murdering, or if you are committing adultery, or if you are stealing, or if you are doing this, if you are not keeping the Sabbath day or not. Because if you are working in love indeed, you will, by default, not be able to do all of all those things. Yesterday, we had volunteers conclave in church. We were here till after 9. Some of these guys were here up until after 11 p.m. And we're just telling ourselves about the need for us to get better in our services with God. A proof that you love the Lord is your gift back unto God in form of service. In form of service. So, but sin didn't and doesn't have a chance in competition with the aggressive forgiveness we call grace. When it's sin versus grace, grace wins hands down. Amen. How did you get the grace that you get that you have? Through the love of the Father. You got the grace that you have through the love of the Father. 
Brethren, this subject on the law, it is something so deep, so wide, so simple, yet so, so, I don't know, so feeling. The writer of the book of, uh, of the of message translation says it's an extravagant grace. It's, 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 it's a life-giving one. I chose many years ago to live my life based on love. I'm tell it's the reason why I have peace. I'm telling you the truth. I've said it before and I'll keep saying it. There is no man living or dead against whom I hold anything. People hurt me. People say all sorts of nasty things to me. You said it. What you said to me is not the problem. The problem is what I do with what you say. Did you get what I'm saying? You can call me all sorts of names. Describe me as a bastard. Describe me as this. Describe me as that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean really move me. You have right to say with your mouth. Your mouth is yours, Sister Abigail. So you have the right to say whatever thing you want to say with your mouth. But me that you're saying it to, I also have the right to choose how I interpret whatever thing that comes out of your mouth. If you will choose to walk in love, you'll find how beautiful this love, this life is. You know the thing about children? Watch them very, very carefully. They are free-spirited, and they are, they are not too conscious of what happens around them. But they know if they are loved or not. For instance, my daughter, she may get up from school today and I say, I was school. And she may go, um, and I was trying to talk to X and Y, and she did not answer me. She felt bad. That's just a little girl. How much more older people? How much more older people? This love that we're talking about, so this father's love is not a love based on what we have done. It is not a love based on what we have. So to me, it's not because you're beautiful. That's not the reason why the father loves you. He just loves you because that is who he is. He cannot deny himself. See. Take this out from this sermon this morning. If you maybe you've not you've heard it, you've not heard it in recent times. Take this out of this sermon this morning. That the Father loves you so deeply, Sister Peace, so much such that nothing and no one can break or take away that love. Bible says, He who did not spare His only Son, Romans chapter one eight verse thirty two. But freely gave him up for us. He says, How shall he not with him freely also give us all things? Don't ever, don't ever for any reason, under any guise, don't ever allow the devil mess up with your mind or your thinking to think that you're not loved. See, let me shock you. In your terrible state, in your sinful state, if you go outside here right now and you begin to mess around, Jesus loves you still. He hates what you're doing, but he loves you still. He cannot deny himself. There is nothing that you can do that will take away his love for it from you. He cannot stop loving you. It is not possible. If that will become possible, then he will no longer be God. He who does not love does not know God because God is love. So every morning you are awake, maybe you don't know what you need to thank God for. Just give God thanks. Thank you, Father, for loving me. There is an assurance that comes with you knowing always and confessing and declaring the love of the Father over your life. It gives you confidence. It gives you an assurance of a better tomorrow. He who did not spare his only begotten Son, but freely gave him up for us, I shall lay not to think freely give us all things. One of my favorite verses in the scripture is first John chapter number three from verse number one. It says, Behold the manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called sons of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Behold the manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called sons of God. What manner of love? Awesome, incredible love. I rest. You know one of the things the love of the Father does? It brings about peace. Oh, God, I'm about to lose. He loves me. He loves me. 
And oh, what joy now fills my soul. Something happens, and now I know his love is so enduring. The love of the Father is something that can never be taken away from you. I am conscious. Can you place your hands on your chest and say after me? I declare that I'm conscious of the love of the Father. And I know that nothing, no one, and nothing can take this love away in Jesus' name. This love, the moment you give your life to Jesus, you know what then happens? The spirit of the Father comes upon you. Then that spirit quickens you to give the same thing out. The love of the Father has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit that was given to us. If you, a believer, would always be conscious of the death, of the weave, of the land, of how magnanimous, how incomprehensible, how inexpressible the love of the Father is, you would never have cause to worry a day in your life. Because you would know that in the midst of the highs and the lows of life, He loves you still. You would know things may not be going the way you desire them to go. You are sure that this man loves you. This man loves you. So I have to take this first part today such that we can prepare our minds for what is to come as we continue this teaching series during our midweek services and Sunday services. So that you, first of all, you can understand that the Father's love for you is real. That the Father's love for you is genuine. That the Father's love for you is the life that you have in Christ. It's a life that you have. So the greatest expression of the Father's love is the gift of His Son. And the greatest expression of Son's love towards us is the salvation of our souls. Salvation of our souls. I told us before how salvation goes beyond just giving your life to Jesus. Many of you think when you talk about salvation, you're just talking about being saved. Salvation is way deeper than just being saved. Salvation is way deeper by just being saved. Salvation encompasses everything. All the victories that was made available in the, on the cross of Calvary when Jesus gave his life for you. So the love of Christ in our hearts as believers should actually be the distinction between us and the people of the world. The Bible says that by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you, he calls me names, so I must do mine. Oh, he abused me, so I must abuse mine. You know, one of the greatest strengths God has given me of late, a couple of years right now, is my capacity to maintain silence in the, in the face of unprovoked provocations. Sometimes people say, I remember a few years ago, one man that I really, you know, respected stood in front of me. I was saying all sorts against me. I mean, we're together, an elderly person, fairly elderly person. We were at a parking lot. As I was saying it, I just did like this. I said, it is fine. I said, it is well. I said, no problem. I said, thank you, sir. I just said, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Do you know, by the time it was done, it felt like a fool. Right there and there, he started hugging me and begging me again. Saying he was sorry. I told him, you don't have to be sorry. Out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. I said, you don't have to be sorry, sir. So at the point when I couldn't take it anymore, I motioned to my car and he was dragging me and he was not begging me. That he was just angry. That he was so sorry. Is this, is that. I said, no, I said, no, I said, it doesn't matter. I said, I'm fine. I said, none of those things hit me. And frankly, see, get to that level too. Eh? Discover, rest in the love of the Father for your life so deeply. That soak yourself into that love so deeply. Such that nothing that somebody says against you will get at you anymore. That's the level which I have. 
You can rest so deeply in the Father's law, such that if you look at me and you begin to call me names and you do this and you do that, it really wouldn't move me anymore. The Father's law far outweighs whatsoever stone you can throw against me. It far outweighs whatsoever stone or whatsoever abuses you can hold at me. So I left the place. He still sent me a message, still begging me. You would have expected or you would have thought that as he was saying it, I should also, you know, be, um, be saying it back. If I said it back, I had all right. I've grown to that level where I don't want confrontation with people anymore. I have the gap of words, the gift of words. One word from my mouth. <laughs> it can, you, you may not be able to sleep again. And you see, because of my calling, because of the grace that I have, I also know that I need to be very careful of the things that, if I curse you, you are cursed. Especially if the things that you're saying or the things that you're doing against me are out of class. If I say anything, God is going to honor it. So these are the things that teaches me to breathe in my tongue. But I got that way because I chose. See, the Father's love is oh, It's like a waterbed. You can so rest on it, and you can so, oh Jesus. The dupe is so thick, so warm, so cold at the same time. That when it comes over you, when you cover yourself with it, you don't feel hurt, no hatred, no anger, no animosity against anybody. Nothing against anybody. The love of the Father. This love is deeper, richer, better than whatsoever love anybody can give to you. It doesn't matter how much my wife loves me. My kids tell me all the time how much they love me. I know the father that I serve loved me way much more. If I call my mom today right now, and I say, mommy, this and this and this and this and this are the things going on with me. I don't feel, if she has the money to get a ticket right away, my mom will not think twice. I'm assured always that no matter how deeply my mother loves me, Jesus loves me way much more. That's the love of the father. Rise up on your feet this morning. One of the reasons why the world cannot love is because the world has not understood and realized the fact that love is a person. Do you understand what I'm saying? People still don't know. It's the reason why they cannot love. They don't know that love is a person. Love is a person, and that person is God. I'd like you to just place your hands on your chest again. <coughs> Especially for those of you who have not fully received the love of the Father in your heart and talk to God this morning. Make that confession and that declaration. Maybe in a long while you've not heard how deeply this man loves you. Just give him thanks. Lord, thank you for loving me so deeply. Thank you, Jesus, because nothing can separate me from your love. The Bible tells us that what can separate us from the love of the Father? He says, shall tribulations, shall trials, he says, shall, shall I, shall death, shall whatsoever thing. He says, nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from the love of the Father. Now, I need you to now take rest in this love. Say to him, Jesus, I rest in your love. I rest in your love. I take rest in your love. I take rest in your love. I take rest in your love. All eyes closed and all eyes bow. A lofty height, we don't like bringing the service to a close without giving someone an opportunity to have a relationship with Jesus. You're watching on YouTube or you're listening via the audio message or you're here in church this morning and you're not giving your life to Jesus. Or at some point you realize that you took your life away again. You went back into the world and you renounced or denounced the salvation of your soul. I'd like you to just leave, lift up your hands this morning if you're here in person. And if you're here watching, watching me, you know, on the on whatever device that you may be using, I'd like you to just say after me, Lord Jesus, today I thank you for bringing to me again the depth of your love for me. I accept this love with all of my heart. And I confess you as my Lord and, Jesus, Lord and Savior. Let your love that has found me, let it keep me in your embrace forever, 
Give me grace to live with all sins and the desires of this world. Give me the grace, Lord Jesus, to live my life for you. If you've just shared that prayer, you've just surrendered your all into, unto Jesus. And I'd like you to know that Jesus loves you very deeply. If you receive that word this morning, I'll celebrate Jesus. Come on, celebrate Jesus, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Amen. So we have our seat in God's presence. Amen. And as we journey through this week, let us be reminded, as this, as this series continues, my wife at some point will take Sister Jay, I'm trying